finally we are able to do pH calculations. Now this is the big stuff. This is where we start doing um, using our calculator and doing some really really interesting questions. Right, so let's start off with the formula. The formula for pH in grade 12 goes like this. Now who, th who thought things could get any worse? Chemistry, Ugh. logs, Ooh. put them together <laughs> Can't be good, right? I promise you the logs in chemistry are very easy. Okay, it's very very easy I must just remind you that the square brackets stand for concentration, so this means concentration of H3O and this formula will always be given to you in your tests and your exams. So let's start Let me show you how it actually works so here we have a solution that contains two moles of HCl in a three decimeter container and you need to work out the pH. Now, this is where all chemistry, or, sorry, all acid base chemistry should start coming together for you. We know that the formula of pH is negative log of H3O. Now I don't know about you, but I don't see any H3O on this page. But we should remember that acids ionize. What does that mean? They react with water. So we write that reaction down, which we've been practicing a lot. So by now, I have no doubt that you guys are feeling comfortable with this. There we go. Now what we do is we know the moles of HCl. We know that that's two moles. And if we look at the ratio here, it's in a one-to-one -one ratio. So that means I can work out the moles of H3O as two moles. Then I can use the formula C equals to N over V to work out the concentration of H3O. So I'm going to say here H3O, which would be its moles divided by the volume of the container, which will be the same for all of the liquids, which would be three. And that should give us 0, 0,6. Actually, I'm going to leave it as two over three because it's not the final answer. So let's leave it as two over three mole per decimeter to the minus. Three. There we go, guys. So now we have the concentration of H3O, which is exactly what we need. So then what we can do is we can say that the pH is equal to negative log of 2 over 3, and that gives us 0, 0,18 if you round it to two decimal places. And students always ask me, Kevin, what's the units of pH? Guys, it doesn't have any units, so that is the answer. Okay, not too bad, hey? Here's another one. Now, this one's pretty cool. Um, it's got an extra little twist. So here they want the pH again, but now we have H2SO4. We know that that is an acid as well. So we react it with water. And we know that that produces H3O+. And then this thing here is diprotic. They've also told us over there. That means it gives away both of its hydrogens. So it gives, if it gives away two hydrogens, then it will become negative two. Then there was a video I showed you a while back where we balanced this equation. Remember the one where I said that um, this thing here gives away both of its hydrogens. So I said H plus and H plus. And we said that each water molecule will have to take up one of them to become H3O. And so we need another water molecule. And so what we showed was that we need a total of two water molecules, so I must put a two over there, and we need two H3Os, well that's how many H3Os will develop. And now, and it's very important guys that you balance that, because we know the moles of H2SO4. Can you see that? They've given that to us. So we can say that there's one mole over here. Now if we look at the ratio, the mole ratio is one of these becomes two of these. If you didn't balance it, you wouldn't have seen that. That is so important. So if we have one mole of H2SO4, that is going to become two moles of H3O. Now we can work out the concentration of H3O by using our formula N over V. And so that's going to be its moles, which is 2 divided by the container volume, which is 5. And if you work that out, you get 0, 0,4. So now we can work out the pH as negative log of H3O. And so that's going to be negative log of 0, 0.4. And that actually gives us a value of 0, 0,40 if you round it to two decimal places. So the most important thing for this question is please, 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 
always remember to balance your equation when reacting it with water. Now we need to talk about how to work out the pH of a base because I'm not sure if you can remember where we look at Arrhenius and Bronsted and we looked at all the different types of bases. A typical base would be something like NaOH. Now we know that a base dissociates. It doesn't react with water. It dissociates into Na plus and OH minus. Now once again I don't know about you but I don't see any H3Os around. Don't worry, there is another formula which is called the KW formula, also given to you on your formula sheet. And that formula is the product of H3O plus concentration and OH minus concentration. And that always equals 10 to the negative 14. It's like a constant. So you can forget about the KW for now. There's your formula, guys. So if you can work out the concentration of OH minus, then you can plug that over here. Whoops, not over there, over here. And then you can use this formula to calculate H3O's concentration, and then you can get the pH by using the negative log H3O. Make sense? Of course, it will make more sense when we do an example. So let's try this one over here. Determine the pH of a NaOH solution. There are three moles and it's a four decimeter container. So step one, just do the ionization if it's an acid or the dissociation if it's a base. So this one is a base, so it dissociates. Right, now make sure it's balanced. In this case, it is. So we have three moles of NaOH, three moles. Now if you look at the mole ratio, it's one, to one. So that means that we will also produce three moles of NaOH. So now we can use the formula C equals to N over V to calculate the concentration of OH minus, which would be um, N over V, which is equal to its moles divided by this container's volume, which is four. And that's going to give us 0 0.75 mole per decimeter. Now we can use that new formula called the KW formula which is always the product of these two, and it always equals 10 to the negative 14. It's a constant. It will be given to you in the exam. So we have the concentration of OH minus, so I can fill that in as 0, 0,75, and then the concentration of H3O is an unknown. So now we can get the concentration of H3O, by saying 10 to the negative 14 divided by 0 0.75. And don't round off your answer, guys, because it's not the final answer. So that's going to be 1,333, but there's a whole lot more threes uh, times 10 to the negative 14. Then we can work out the pH, because that's negative log of the concentration of H3O+. Plus, and so that will be negative log of... 1.33 that whole number times 10 to the negative 14 and so our final answer for this pH should be 13,88 and that makes sense that the pH is quite high because NaOH is a base. So here's another question. So this is also a base so we start off by just doing the dissociation now, from your valencies on your periodic table, you should know that Mg is going to break up into plus 2, whereas OH is negative 1. But then if you balance everything, you should realize that there needs to be a 2 over here. That is so important, because we have 1 mole of MgOH2. That's what they're saying over here. But then if you look at the mole ratios, it's 1 to 2. So that means we are going to produce 2 mole of OH minus. So we can now work out the concentration of OH- minus by using the N over V formula. And so the moles is 1. Sorry, not for, NA, not for OH. The moles is 2. So that's going to be 2 over the container volume of 3. Don't round off. That's the final answer. Well, this isn't the final answer, so don't round off just yet. Now we can use the KW formula, which is OH- minus multiplied by the concentration of H3O+, plus is always equal to... 10 to the negative 14. So we can say 2 over 3 over here, 
multiplied by the concentration of H3O plus equals to 10 to the negative 14. You can then work out the concentration of H3O plus. And so that gives us the concentration as 1.5 times 10 to the negative 14. Then we can use the pH formula, which is negative log of H3O. And so that's going to be negative log. Okay, I'm not going to fit that there. That's going to be negative log of 1.5 times 10 to the negative 14. And that gives us 13,82. Right, and then our last question, for those of you that are still here, well done. This one is a little bit different because now they're going to give us the pH. Can you see that? They're going to give us the pH and then you need to be able to work backwards. So let me just show you the way things flow. Normally, we take the reaction HCl plus H2O gives us H3O plus plus Cl minus. Then what we do is we usually take the moles of HCl and that gets us the moles of H3O. We can then work out the concentration of H3O by using this formula. And then from there, we can get the pH by using negative log of H3O+. That's the direction that we normally go, but now we are going to go the complete opposite. Because now they give us the pH, so we start here. That will allow us to get this, the H3O. By having the H3O, we can then go to there, which will allow us to get the number of moles of H3O. So that's this one over here. And then once you have the moles of H3O, you can go back to HCl. So we are going in reverse now. Okay, it's not that difficult, but I'm just showing you the bigger picture of how everything fits in. So we will be starting with the pH. So we know that pH is equal to negative log of H3O positive. So we can say 2.1 equals to minus log of H3O concentration. Now, here's where some students get a little bit panicky because they know that they have to use logs in reverse. But let me just put your mind at ease. It is easy based on the fact that there's only one thing you need to know how to do. You must remember that this number at the bottom is a 10. That's the base of a log if they don't give you a number. This negative should go over to the left side like that. Then all that you do is you say that the concentration of H3O plus will be equal to whatever this number is, which will always be a 10, to the power of whatever this number is, like that. And then if you go work that out, you get a long number, and don't round it off because it's not the final answer, so it's 7,943 blah 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 times 10 to the negative 3 mole per decimeter. Okay, so now we have the concentration of H3O+. Plus. So we could go get the moles of H3O+, plus now. So we know that the concentration of H3O+, plus is 7,943. It was that long number, which you probably still have on your calculator, equals to N over the volume, which is 4. So you could now work out the moles of H3O+, plus, and that should give you a long number as well, don't round it off, 0 0.03177, and it goes on and on and on. So now we need the moles of HCl, and the way we do that is we look at the equation of HCl reacting with water. Now we currently have the moles of H3O. We know that that's 0 0.03177 dot dot dot. Now if you look at this equation, it's already balanced. So the ratio here is 1 to 1. So that means that my moles of HCO is also going to be 0 0.03177 dot dot dot. So then I can work out the mass of HCO by using this good old formula. And so that's going to be N equals to, oh, sorry, the moles we already have. So that's 0 0.03177 dot 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 equals to the mass over its molar mass. Now, that's going to be a hydrogen, and then chlorine is 35.5. So if you had to go work out the mass of HCl, you should get a final answer as 1.16 grams.